Welcome to Real Action, Michael Guest. I've got Danny Johns with me and Justin Nye from Gladstone Fly and Sport Fishing. Speaking of Gladstone, we're fishing out of Gladstone Port here at the moment in the southern Great Barrier Reef. It's what we call the Gladstone Ridge and I can see it spanning out behind us. We're going to kick, kick off fishing around these pylons. Now I've fished here with you before and we have caught massive golden trevally. There's, uh, there's Grunter here, Cobia, Black Dew. I haven't been able to, I've hooked a couple here, haven't landed any yet. I know Danny's keen to get one of those. Definitely. But I know, yeah, Queenie's on top water, there's giant trevally. It's a fantastic place to do some cool sport fishing, especially for a southerner like me, so. Yeah, absolutely, Guesty. So many variety of species through this whole uh, shipping lane. Yep. Um, nice and close to home, but big, big fish. Yeah, a little bit of breeze at the moment, and he, Justin was talking about even some bigger giant trevally, maybe even back that way. So we'll have a bit of a go here, we'll move around, see what we can find. All right, let's get to it, lads. Sounds good, let's Sounds go. Good. I've caught a few black Jew before, but they're like our silver mulloway at home. They love a big thumping paddle tail. A lot of current here, so actually using a really heavy jig head there. Three ounce jig head, because the current's ripping through here. Big tides at the moment. I'll feed that big paddle tail plastic on. Get that set up nice and straight like that. And uh, along with that, that super heavy scent and that big paddle tail, I reckon that's gonna do the job. Busy shipping channel coming out of Gladstone Harbour here, so just got to make sure you stay outside those markers and keep an eye Ooh, out for when the ships are there. Oh. Danny just had a bit yeah, of a bump. Yeah, I got a bump. But uh, yeah, really busy, so that ship's well inside the, the channel and we're on the outside of it, which is the place to be. Come on. Got that big jig head on the bottom, the current's ripping through. We might have to wait till that tide backs off a little bit to, to get a bite off some of those bigger demersal fish on the bottom, which are, would definitely be those black dew, but just trying to keep it in its face at the moment and trying different techniques, a big slow lift and fall to the bottom, and then maybe a couple of just rattly sort of twitches to keep that tail moving, just whatever's going to annoy them into biting. Yeah, got in there, Danny. <laughs> nice. I've stitched him up. He's throwing, throwing the biggest stick bait, and we saw a couple of big queenies come out, which is one of the other cool sport fish that you can get into around the pylons, and I had it long, slender, oh, jerk, <laughs> jerk shad style plastic rigged up. So I've, I've switched him, switched him over to the, to, to the plastic, and uh, yeah, wow, just they go hard. Oh, that's a nice queenie, Danny. Oh. <laughs> Come on, mate. Oh, yeah, that's a way to start off. Swinging Beautiful. around here. Oh, 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 look out. Oh, lift him up there, bud. Aren't they a cool thing, Queenies? I'll oh, spin beautiful. around this way. Justin, come up here, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well guided. <laughs> got, got us onto the Queenie. They're a cool looking thing, aren't they? How are they? Oh, mate, built for speed, power. Oh, Danny can grab the tail. Very underrated sport oh, fish. They, they, oh, they're one of my favourite fish, especially when you get them on top water. They, they, they jump around. Just, Gotta watch those spines, haven't you, Danny? Those two. Just show everyone at home, Justin, those two spikes. Yeah, just these two here. They are super dangerous. If you wanna you wanna cut hand, they are just savage. And these ones here, they're not too bad there, soft through there, but these these dorsal spikes and those um, those lower spikes there are just deadly. So match the hatch as they say. I'll just take that hook out. And that soft plastic. There you go. So that 
That just looks like a fleeing bait fish. Yeah, it does. You did a great job there, <laughs> raising the... I teased them up for you. <laughs> you. You certainly did. I fired that back in and there's the result. Beautiful queen fish. There's a few more there. There are, there are schooling fish. I know Gladstone Harbour, you get numbers of big ones in there at times as yeah, well. Yeah, mate, big numbers. And like, as we saw on the sounder, these guys look like they're stacked up on top, so... So maybe we could try a little stick bait across the surface, something a bit smaller in profile rather than the great big one. And Yeah, absolutely. All right, we'll give that a go. Well, Let's that was good it. fun, I've got to tell you. Right, bud, spear him back in, eh? Do it again. Yeah. He's gone. Oh. back on the water this morning, but it rained out yesterday afternoon. <laughs> it happens in Queensland. Um, we went out the front around the pylons there and, and uh, got a nice queen fish. The barometer was really low, a little bit quiet yesterday, but uh, we've changed things up a bit. Breeze is blowing, but there's so many options here in Gladstone. We're, we're back in, uh, in the, one of the fantastic river systems here at the top end of the, what they call the narrows. Danny's got the cast net. He's looking for some Popeye mullet or a few prawns. I think we're getting a cast in there now. Justin's on the wheel, and hopefully we're going to get some fantastic live bait, chase a few threadfin salmon, and maybe a nice saltwater barra as well. What did you get, mate? Oh, there's a nice prawn in there. You'd yeah, be a good live bait. Couple of prawns, couple of mullet. Look at that. So yeah, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where you're fishing. I tell you, that's a fantastic live bait. There, we're going to throw vibes around too, and do a bit of lure fishing while we're going. But but it uh, doesn't hurt to um, to have a tank full of live bait and. And while the tide's nice and low and you've got all these drains coming out, it's the ideal time to do it. Once the tide rushes up over there, it's a lot harder to, to catch bait or, or, or much harder, that's for sure. All right. Yeah. Oh, oh, big goal. So that's a Popeye mullet, Danny? Yeah, mate. Check that out. So they're the ones you see cruising along the, along the top of the water with their, with their head up and their eyes sort of just sort of doing that, aren't they? Yeah, Looking sort that's of going. barramundi money right there. Barramundi money, I like it. it looks like a pretty cool bait. <laughs> just sounding around, trying to find a barra, mainly using the side scan. <laughs> Danny's just marked a couple back up. I've got a bit of a creek coming into the main river system here is what we've got, Justin. Now it's just a matter of putting ourselves in the right spot. So we've got electric motor down. There's bait here, you can see on the sound of there, nice bloom of bait, or probably be prawns, Danny, or herring. Oh, or probably herrings. Herring there. And we're just looking for them on the side scan. So the whole idea of using electronics is parking right on top of the fish. So we want to put our baits right where they are and you've got the best chance of a bite that way. Oh, there we go. Yes. Got him on now. Got him. What you got, bud? Don't know. Got a bit of a, oh. Oh, oh no, it's a barra. Oh. I saw a big swirl, but generally the barra, the big thing with barra, they jump out of the water and and uh, you know straight away. I've seen the big swirl so far. It's taken yeah, a bit of line. He came up early in the piece, but just didn't get airborne. But it was definitely a barrow displacement. Oh, there he yeah. goes. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Five to nine kilo spin rod, a 5,000 size reel, some 20 pound braid, and just 40 pound fluorocarbon leader. So I'm fishing a bit lighter than we normally would for barra. That little circle hook there as well. And um, hopefully, Fingers crossed, we're going to get another look at this fish here in a minute. He might come up and shake his head again and say, oh, there he is. Lovely fish. Big burn. Well, you can see this fish, a classic saltwater barra, nice yellow tail, bright, almost got that purple tinge to their back. And they'll be generally really chrome coming out of this system. Right. Here he comes. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Yes. Woo, let's get him up. All right. All right. Hey, wow. hey, 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 don't leave yeah. me hanging, brother. Don't leave me hanging. Check that out. And you can see the difference. So he's not super yellow finned, though, this one, is he? Spend a bit of time in some fresh water, you reckon, Justin? Yeah, possibly. Like, I mean, always generally early in their life cycle, they spend a lot up in the fresh water. Yep. Um, and as they push to this maturity, this guy would be well and truly pushed over that female bracket now. Yep. Um, so we'd be hold a girl right now. Yep. Um, but yeah, then they sort of start to chrome up a little bit more. Yeah, cool looking things. You can see they got those. I'll just grab that turn around here. You can see a size of the bait that they'll engulf. And we had some big pop-eyed mullet 
The big fella was going pretty well on the cast net there before, but you can see by the size of that mouth. A great fish to handle too, just for the kids at home. They're one fish, you can give them a really good thumb grip and hang on to them. We'll get this fella back in the water in a second. But that big mullet is no problem for a fish that size, which is probably close to 90 centimetres, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I'd say so. Beautiful looking barra. Check that out. Now that's a cracking catch. If you've been catching some ripper fish lately, then send your photo into our Alfabs Cracking Catch competition at the Real Action Facebook page. To get you hooked up every week, we're giving away a pen rod reel and line combo, an awesome ocean LED underwater light, along with some great gear from Valvoline to keep your marine engine and trailer lubricated. Mate, oh, that is a beauty. What a beautiful fish that is. <laughs> let's get her back in the water. All right, eh? let's just swim off. Awesome. <laughs> We're good. It's a cracking morning this morning. Danny Johns has left us and I've replaced him with this big looking unit <laughs> right here, Evan Spear, who um, spends a lot of time out on the dam. Justin's with us again today. So we're on a Woonga Dam this morning and we're doing something a little bit different that I haven't done here yet and that's trolling, covering lots of ground, looking for barras on the sounder. We're gonna have three rods out in a minute. Although, hey, you're, you're driving, you've got your, yeah. <laughs> your lure in the water already. Yeah, mate. Justin's about to get his out. I'm gonna troll this side and we'll see what we can find. So if you look here, this is, that's not the weed edge there, that's actually the old river bear that comes up onto a flat. And then you, just up from that is where your weed starts. And they'll usually, they'll usually be right on that, that edge where this bait's congregating, yeah, right. or they'll be just up on the flat next to the weed. So, so it depends on the time of the day where they are. So early they're likely <coughs> to be a little bit shallower. Generally a good rule to, to start with is early, like start shallow, yep. and then as the day progresses, Get, in. Yeah, get deeper. It's a bit of a stealthy way we're doing it at the moment with the electric motor. You can use your petrol engine as well, but when it's quiet there, how fast have you got us going at the moment? Well, it's sticking around about, you know, between three and a half and four and a half K an hour. Yep. So, yeah, you don't have to go super fast. Yep. 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 Good fish. Oh. Oh. Whack. So it's we one just of those, mark them, hey. One of those bite periods where boys are talking about moon, moon rise, and uh, bang, just climbed on it. Oh, oh, oh. There he is. Come on, bud. <laughs> they're good looking fish, yeah, aren't they, Evan? Good. Mate, and they're nice. I'm using the bait casting outfit, five to nine kilo. A little bit longer this one, but it's a beautiful rod. And that fish is just pinned under the corner of the jaw. Reckon we saw him on the sound. Are you ready there, though? Oh, he's... <laughs> Finally, hey, man. Mate, that's good. That's oh, persistent. Yeah. Lift that up. Cool stuff. Woo. That was good, <laughs> eh? I'll just um, be careful with um, big hard body lures, haven't you, Evo, with the... Oh, yeah, particularly they can shake the head and yeah, catch and you pretty easily. do not want a hook. So that's the outfit, some 60-pound fluorocarbon leader, that big deep diving hard body there. I chose that one. Remember what did I say to you? I said it looks angry, that yeah, lure. Yeah, you did actually. And uh, put some sand on there. It makes a big difference putting that bit of sand. And there we go. Come over here, Justin. He's up the front clearing a bit of gear out the way. And, uh, oh. Nearly oh. got tail Tail slacked. in the face. So tell us, uh, age of that fish, super oh, healthy looking This fish here, just around that 75 centimetre mark, about two to two and a half years old. Maybe, probably about two. Yep. Um, but really healthy. From you know 60 centimetres up, you get to see they just get thicker in girth, deeper. But yeah, so much food here for them. Oh, nearly fell over then. I was doing a bit of a tap dance. Yeah, so much food, and so that 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 outfit we're using, so the low profile reel and that lure, it's thinking that's some type of barred grunter or some yeah, sort of definitely, bait. Definitely, yeah, yeah banded grunt, banded of barred grunter is definitely one of the big food sources along with the bony brim. Yep. But um, sometimes they just get really switched in on those barred or banded grunters, as you want to call them. Yep. It is blowing, and that's one of the great things about this 
uh, Gladstone region is that there are so many options and this is a fantastic option. Both of you guys have got a boat each that you're running at the moment with um, Gladstone Fly and Sport Fishing. Yeah, yeah, sure do. So you either go with this bloke or you go with this bloke. So I don't know which one I'd go with at the moment. So who was, who was driving the boat then? Oh, oh, that's this bloke. Oh. This bloke. <laughs> this bloke was driving the boat. So it's yeah, been a bit of a quiet day, but it, we're finding fish, and I think 100%. that's hundred percent. That's half the battle, isn't it? Timing's everything. Yeah, that's it. Let's Ex get exactly. Get back in. Off you go, bud. Look at those big red eyes. Go on. Go on. Oh. <laughs> hey, man. Staying safer on the water has never been easier, thanks to the Marine Rescue app, and it's free. All you need to do is tell us where you're going and when you'll be back, and don't forget to log off. So take a couple of minutes to set up your profile. Be smart, choose the tracking option so Marine Rescue knows where to start searching in an emergency. Logging on with Marine Rescue New South Wales means someone's watching out for you. Marine Rescue New South Wales, volunteers saving lives on the water. trolling along in Lake Hawunga at the moment chasing a few barra and trolling was a big thing to do here uh, a few years ago and as these barra are just getting bigger and bigger every year and we'll get back into the meters from what the boys tell me um, the boys from Gladstone Fly and Sport Fishing and then trolling is going to be something that really kicks back into gear again along with burning frogs and casting. But the setup we got here at the moment is side scan right across the bottom so we can mark the fish either side so we know if we're trolling next time we, we make a run we might want to move more one way or the other. And the other thing we're doing is with the down scan and conventional sounder picture we can see exactly what's going on underneath so we know we're running over good fish and you can get excited about a bite. You see a stump there, you know there's two or three fish sitting up high, crack, you're going to get a bite. And then on the fifth, fifth one over here, well I guess it's the fourth one because we've got um, our GPS here, is we've got our track going up and down. So you could put GPS marks in and mark things that you find underneath as well. But really that setup has got you covered pretty well for trolling. So the big thing is that side scan, if you see them out to the side, change your run and then maybe come back up a different angle or move across to where the fish are actually sitting. Sometimes you've got to get that lure right in their noses to get a bite off a barra. Oh yep, 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 got him on. Go. Go, go, oh, yep. go. Oh, I can the see him there. There he goes. Oh, yeah. It's a little one. It's a little fella, but he's, a, he's come right up the surface. Oh! Now he's woken up. Oh! <laughs> oh, he's still there. He's jumping around, mate. Sensational oh, stuff. Now he's woken up. Oh, here he comes. A wind's blowing. Oh! <laughs> awesome jumps. And that's what you come barra fishing for, is to see those jumps. I better get the net, mate. Yeah, mate. He's... I'm too busy standing there watching the barra jump. I thought I better get the net. And look, that's why you've got people who travel a long way from the southern states to come up here, but they want to see these things perform and jump and carry on. Yeah, mate, absolutely. So we ate it pretty well, that one? Yeah, he crashed it. Yeah. Oh. Crashed that hard body. I've got, I've got the big, do you like my net? Oh. I made this. It's uh, two nets made into one, this one. Right, uh, you're right to go. Oh, <laughs> that was an aerial. Right, oh, mate, let's get him in. Let's get him in, eh? Sneak him across. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, that's the shot. So colours, when it comes to trolling hard body lures, colours make, make much of a difference, do you think? Or, uh, or, or the colours catch the angler a little bit? I think, I think there's a little bit of that. <laughs> but yeah, look, I think, I think it's more of a confidence with the angler. Like, if you're confident in it, you're going to fish it harder. And well, you're going to work it properly. Yeah, that's right. And you, this guy's tag this guy's too. Tag. Oh, wow, he's got a little tag. And so when you're, when you're talking about, um, I guess, confidence and then working it harder, so that's totally different to the what I caught my fish on. So that's more of a sort of lighter colour, that one. Yeah. Once again, uh, I've got to tell you, you've got to whack some of this stuff on there when it's quiet. It makes a difference. Yeah, it does. A bit of scent can make a, make a huge difference. But, but at the end of the day, having that confidence to really get there and give it a rip and yeah. then let your arm roll back for the pause so yeah. that, that little swims that down. Pause, yeah. And then that, it just sits there. And when it's sitting there, that's quite often when they crack. Most of the time, yeah. Oh, you're on, you, do you want me to help you get up there, mate? You're no, right. I'm right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. And look at cool. the tag, it's... Yeah, cool, so he's, uh, that's been in there. So I, that, that tag will be a Gladstone area waterboard tag. Yep. And that would have been in here. He would have been put in at about so probably uh, 25 centimetres with the tag in it. Yep. 
um, and that'll get give us some good growth rate data off that. So we'll get a snapshot of the numbers on that before yeah. we put him back. Sensational. We'll get some data back. Quickly, difference between a uh, freshwater barrel like this one here that's in an impoundment and big salties. You caught one with me the other day there, 90, cent 90 odd centimetre saltwater barrel. Yep. Difference in appearance straight away that you can notice is the colour of the fins. Yeah, 100%. So generally more of that brownie olive coloured fins. Um, generally a fish, like sometimes these guys can still be really chrome, but this guy, as you see, more of that traditional impoundment colour, like that, I guess that olivey brown mixed with a little bit of purple through his back. Definitely a darker fish, but also deeper through the body. They tend to put up, put on a lot more weight um, early so that they don't have to roam around too much for food against currents. Obviously yeah, there's only wind current in an impoundment, you don't have tides. So, so if you hang out in the impoundment, you end up more robust and more yeah. solid oh, building. If yeah. you're a saltwater person, <laughs> yeah. your shape's a little bit different. Is that what, is that what we're that's, suggesting? That's pretty well, much. I don't know what you're trying to say. I'm not going to say anything because I'll, I'll get crushed in about two seconds. <laughs> you but yeah, you're pretty much running on the same track there, mate. <laughs> All right, you're picking up what I'm putting down. That's yeah, what absolutely, that's it. <laughs> absolutely. Well, there you go. Another beautiful impoundment barra on the trial being fishing the fantastic Gladstone region. Uh, Southern Great Barrier Reef, I got it right that time. Yeah, mate. Fishing with Justin Knight, Evan Spear today, but we also fish with uh, Danny Johns, Queenfish, uh, Saltwater Barra, and of course, Empowerment Barra. Plenty to do in this part of the world. You've been watching Real Action. We'll catch you next time. Bye now. See you guys. Real Action is brought to you by Pertec, with 102 service and supply centres around Australia for all your hydraulic and industrial hose requirements.